Hello, and welcome to Chak's Break. It's me, Megafire. My voice ran away. So instead, we brought in a special guest. Also, there's me still here. <laughs> oh yeah, special Dark guest. Here. <laughs> special guest, Mike Pollock. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I assume that was my cue, because I just started talking. <laughs> no, it's of course. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for appearing. We're like this little tiny corner of nowheresville and you just agreed i appreciate it we both appreciate it well i like to live by the motto of it's nice to be important but it's more important to be nice so i got time to spare so you can have some <laughs> it's wonderful thank you all right mike we're just gonna dive straight into an interview with you if that's all right with you unless you have anything else you want to say uh, that's, what, that's what i was expecting to be here for so <laughs> let's all do right. that <laughs> All right, good idea. <clears throat> so, what's your favorite part about voice acting, or your least favorite part? Um, my favorite part is the combination, which is actually, which I guess makes it more than one favorite part. Um, the ability to appeal to my short attention span, and that I could cram a lot of little jobs into a, a small amount of time. So I'm not bored by any long, extended, recurring job day after day after day. So I'm always working on a cartoon one day, video game another day, a narration the third day. And the joy of voice acting for me is the ability to be tons of different characters in a short amount of time. Uh, I just voiced a little short animated film um, where I went in as one main character. And they said, oh, and while you're here, we're going to try on these two other characters. And I just developed three separate characters in the space of about an hour and a half. And that's something that on camera is pretty hard to do. For sure. I, I feel it. Um, all right. Well, least favorite? Um, least favorite. Uh, let's see. There are some gigs that pay a, an embarrassingly low amount of money. And... On a purely realistic and uh, and return on investment uh, type of thing, that's not so great sometimes. Mm. I understand that times are tough, but you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I read that you did uh, plenty of theater earlier in your life. Uh, any thoughts you'd like to share about that? Um, it's an excellent training ground. I mean, it's that, that's what most people, when they think of acting, they think of either theater or on-camera stuff like TVs or movies. But for me, as, as a primarily a voice actor, it's a great training ground because you have to learn to act a, opposite people before you can go into a booth and b perform all by yourself, imagining what the other people might be saying and might be sounding like. So I, love, I loved working on stage, but there was the inconvenience of wardrobe and makeup and hours and hours of rehearsal, days and days of rehearsal. Um, as opposed to now where I walk into a room, see a script, and start doing it. Um, the, um, there are occasional community theater type stuff that I've done recently. I have done a live radio play, and that's kind of like voice acting, but with people watching you. There were a couple of days of rehearsal, and then we went to like an old age, old age home and performed for people. It's like, okay, cool. It's like acting on stage, but not acting on stage. So, as far as the time commitment that I can invest in live appearances, uh, performing-wise, that's about the extent of it. Voice acting is, is a lovely thing for me. I'm glad you feel so passionate about it, because I, I, I do appreciate your voice acting a lot. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, speaking of your voice acting, I remember hearing your great voice, or... Yeah, your voice was the majority of the fantastic movie Ratatouille. I Any had comments on that. <laughs> I had several dozen characters in that, and um, as poorly reviewed as the piece as the whole might be, I watched it. Uh, uh, I guess a year or so ago, and I said, "Oh, I was that guy. Oh, I forgot I was that guy. Hey, I'm that guy too. I'm pretty versatile." So, <laughs> as purely as the radio play, if you you know. Turn your, turn your face away from the screen and ignore the, the dialogue as words. Just listen to the various voices I do and pick out which ones are me. And it's like, oh, wow, Mike's there. Hey, it's Mike. Look, it's Mike again. So, 
I'm proud of it. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we were going to ask something, that, like, uh, like if you watch the stuff, like TV shows or whatnot that you're that you've done, or play games that you're in. So, um, I'm most likely to watch stuff that's on broadcast or cable television because it's actually available to me and I can watch it and DVR it and it's convenient. Um, stuff that gets released to DVD, such as the infamous Rat Tattooing. Um, I actually bought a copy of the DVD because I was in a bookstore looking at normal stuff and while browsing through the DVDs, there this was on the shelf. So naturally, I had to buy a copy because the producer was too cheap to give me one. Um, and yes, yeah, so I have that and I watched it and then somebody ripped it to YouTube and now the world can enjoy it. Um, <laughs> but generally, stuff that goes direct to DVD, I'm not likely to buy unless someone hands me a copy because... I don't go around shopping for stuff that I'm in. Um, and games, I'm not a gamer. I'm an actor. And, and people are often confused. You mean you're in games and you don't play the games? I'm in the games because I'm a good actor and I make the game sound good. If I was a good gamer and not a good actor, there would be no point. And because I grew up, I'm of a certain age where the games of my youth were like the classic arcade games. And I have neither the uh, coordination, patience, or aptitude for gaming with the exception of the, the extremely classic and four other people played it uh, arcade game called Trivia Wiz, which I played so often that I memorized all the questions and got to the top of the leaderboard because I memorized all the questions. So I guess I, at the time I knew a whole lot of answers because they kept appearing on the screen and I guessed them wrong. And then it was A, no, not B. The answer was A. Well, great, next time it came up, I know what the answer is, thanks. I guess that's a minor accomplishment. But as far as the actual games... Watching the gameplay of games as I've done um, is, for me, not much of a thrill. So I appreciate the visual um, impressiveness of, say, a Sonic game. But watching Sonic, for me, it's like, oh, look, he's running. Look, he's jumping. Oh, he's spinning. Oh, he's running. Hey, he's jumping. Oh, he's spinning again. All right, got it. So, you know. And it's, it, it's the same kind of thing about stuff I'm passionate about. I love old radio dramas and new radio dramas. And people that don't appreciate radio dramas would find it very boring. Why are you sitting listening to people talking for two hours? I don't understand it. I can't follow it. So to each his own. No, for sure. Everybody has their own little uh, corner of the, uh, uh, how was it? <clears throat> the media world that they appreciate. And if you don't particularly like games, it's no problem. I mean, personally, I feel like Radio dramas are cool. I wouldn't sit and listen to every single one, but, you know, that's your thing, so go ahead. Sure. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be in the games. It's just, I, <clears throat> no, th there is no requirement that I have to be able to play the games to be in the games. Yeah. That's like in theater. You're not, even though you, you are maybe casted as Hamlet, doesn't mean you have to like Hamlet. It just exactly. means you're good at being Hamlet. <clears throat> exactly. And I, I, my first uh, early animation gigs were anime stuff. And I had never watched anime beyond, say, the classic uh, dubbed shows of my youth like Speed Racer and, and Kimba the White Lion. So that was my anime experience. And just because I was in anime doesn't mean I'm necessarily an anime fan. I have nothing against anime. I know that lots of people like anime. But I'm in anime because I can perform anime well. All right. Um, <clears throat> well... What is your opinion on the voice acting industry today? Is it different from your time, or is it still pretty much the same? As a kid, the um, legendary voice actors of my youth, the Mel Blanks, Doss Butlers, Paul Fries, Bill Scott, June Foray, the rest of the cast of the Rocky and Bullwinkle show, they were known primarily as voice actors. That's what they did. They did it very well, and they did it in lots of different shows. There is a pesky trend now that other people have complained about, so I'm not alone, of celebrity casting, where, oh, look, Leonardo DiCaprio is popular. Let's get him to voice our cartoon because lots of people will see it because Leonardo DiCaprio is in it, which is great for the parents who like Leonardo DiCaprio, and I guess it makes it easier to sit through a film if Leonardo DiCaprio is in something. But kids who are watching the film don't care who Leonardo DiCaprio is and aren't going to see the film because he's in it. They're going to see the film and the story. So why not hire people that do that professionally like me? But, you know, that's just me. <laughs> just saying. <clears throat> it's true.
true. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, any advice on like becoming a voice actor? Start on stage like I did. Uh, school theater is an excellent training ground. I did lots of school theater when I was in school. Um, you can. There are books that I'm. I that I would recommend. I'm in a book called Voice for Hire. I wrote a couple of pages on animation. Those are good for all various aspects of the voiceover industry, including not just animation and gaming voices, but commercials and narrations and promos and, and all sorts of stuff you can do in, in voice acting. Um, theater classes um, at school, in addition to community theater, formal training and acting, just a little bit to get the basics of the terminology and the concept behind what makes good acting doesn't hurt. I did not major in theater, but I had enough little theater things on the side uh, to go along with my major in radio and eventually realizing, hey, radio is not so much anymore. <laughs> But um, learn to act before you concentrate on voice acting because there's a whole genre, a whole thing of acting. Wow, that was very well phrased, yeah. Mr. Professional whole thing of acting. Brian. Yes, exactly. There's a whole – it's a craft and you should know the basics of the craft before you focus on just one aspect of it like voice yeah. acting. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I currently do theater and I was – sort of aspiring personally to become a voice actor. So um, I did read uh, from past interviews like a year ago, your interview with um, the, the Sonic guy. I already forgot his YouTube channel. It was a big one, big, big interview. Um, and you did talk about your theater life and in your FAQ. I read that up. So I basically took up theater from that. Excellent. It's been a fun time. I, I'm really glad you wrote that stuff down. A lot of people wouldn't do that. There's a I one thing I miss in doing dubs is usually you're recording alone, which is cool because I've gotten good at that. Um, but again, it's also very solitary. I mean, you're not completely alone. There's usually a director and an engineer on the other side of the glass, but you're not acting with anyone. But there are um, r more rare in the kind of stuff that I do, but there are more two-person and three-person and multi-person things happening, um, commercials and some films and some cartoons that are done ensemble style. And it's a m real sense of camaraderie. Not only are you goofing around with the people on the other side of the glass, but you're goofing around on the people with, with the people on the same side of the glass. And you're acting in real time, and you're saying stuff, and you're reacting to them. And the one thing I remember from my acting training is the, the essence of acting is reacting. So you have people to react with in real time, and you can really build a performance and base it on what other people are doing and shift stuff around. And um, also the egotistical side of being able to do something really cool, and other people get to hear you do it in real time. Like, hey, look what I can do. Hey, hey pretty cool, huh? Thank you. Yeah. It's definitely always helpful to have uh, someone else give you uh, their take or uh, their opinion on how something should be done. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, one of our friends wanted to know something like, uh, like, how was it working on A Cat in Paris? That was really cool. That was, um, it was cool knowing that it would end up in theaters, which it did. Um, beyond that, it was basically a standard dub thing. It was me alone in a room with the director, um, the legendary Michael Sinner Nicholas, who was legendary for me because he gave me my first few anime roles, and it's always great to work with him. Um, but it was really cool doing it and then knowing, hey, this is not just the standard dubbing thing because this will actually end up in theaters in limited distribution, but still in theaters nonetheless. Um, I was able to go with my family, sit in a theater, eat popcorn, watch me in, or watch someone speaking with my voice on the screen um, and went back uh, with uh, my brother and his family and say, hey, look, bro, look what I can do. I'm in the movies. Um, and that was really cool just because it's great to be on TV, but it's also really cool to be in a theater listening to other people watching the film. And if I would get a line that got a laugh, I was like, hey, yeah, I got a laugh. Listen to me. <laughs> um. <clears throat> well, that's a movie, but now I know that I recently read through the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, wiki that you did a voice for Jack Kirby. Yes, I, I did. think that's pretty awesome. Thank Do you, you remember how you took that role on? Absolutely. 
Um, I was cast as the role. They cur- called him Kirby in the script. He was based on Jack Kirby, but for various legal reasons, they didn't want to blatantly say, hey, this is Jack Kirby. But they did say when they were casting me that this is based on Jack Kirby. And I said, really? A real live guy? I should probably do some research on him. So I scoured the web, or what there was of the web 10 years ago, um, and there was precious little audio from Jack Kirby himself. So I took two different approaches. First, I um, contacted the uh, lovely and talented Mark Evigny, uh, who is an animation expert and script writer and other stuff. And he worked with Kirby and had clips of Kirby. And I sent him an email saying, hi, I'm just this guy. I wasn't, I guess, as known as I was then. But I'm playing Jack Kirby in a cartoon that I can't really talk about. Do you have any samples of audio that I can have? And his response, sorry if he's listening, but he said... Well, you know, Jack, when he was alive, he didn't really like people playing him in cartoons, so I really can't help you. Best of luck. Thanks. All right. <laughs> so we did a little more Googling and found some people that had some clips and listened to some clips and heard his voice, realized that he sounded like one of my uncle-in-laws, my wife's father or my wife's father's sister's husband. Not important how he was related, but... He had a very similar voice. So I said, all right, I'll base it on that, that voice of, of this uncle that I know. And it's close enough for, for folks who probably haven't heard Jack Kirby speak. But at least I knew I was in the general, uh, the general arena of what his voice should sound like. And uh, I remember I had some clips on my old smartphone at the time. And I took them with me and said, wait, hang on, time to record. Let me just refresh my memory. I heard the Kirby clips. I had Uncle Pat in my head. And what came out was the closest approximation of Jack Kirby I could give. I think it turned out rather well, if I do say so myself. I was rather proud. Yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah, I, I liked it. I didn't know who Jack Kirby was when I was younger, so of course it took me until like a lot recently to realize how c- cool you got casted as, you know, Jack Kirby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very it was a very special little role. Um, a, a, a one-shot deal as it may be and maybe not remembered by too many people but if you can find it and you watch it and you realize oh there was actually some work that went into that because there's not often a lot of time to do if I'm dubbing an existing for example an anime that's been adapted in the, the dreaded four kids style yes I know many people didn't like the four kids completely readapted um, their their cartoons and animes but when they redid stuff there wasn't a lot of there wasn't much point in researching what the original character was like because by the time it was adapted and localized, it wasn't the same character anymore. So, for example, Meat from Ultimate Muscle, one of my first big recurring four kids roles. Um, when I did it, it was a big truck of boys like this. But the original Japanese voice was a little baby girl like this. And they wanted a completely different character. So me listening to the previous character didn't help me much. So... I did a little bit of research on Meat just to, to learn about what his actual, char- his actual character background was. But then I realized, at least for four kids stuff, that's not very helpful. So I kind of got out of that habit for most of the stuff. But a character that's based on a real-life person, you really should do some research to get it kind of right. And I was, was glad that on a character like Kirby, I actually had something to look for. And I was interested to find out how hard it was to find source material and even more interested to find out that he didn't like being played as a character, and too bad I had a job to do, so I had to do it anyway. All right. Uh, you have a great narrator voice. Do you ever just casually use it for fun? Yeah, like the one from Pokemon or something. You just kind of follow behind a friend of yours and just like narrate what they do, or you know, it's a daily basis to do something fun like that. Usually not out loud. I'll narrate stuff in my head for my own amusement. The closest thing uh, I do to that is we have a very dumb dog. He's a big black shepherd lab mix, dumb as a stump. Is he listening? I certainly hope not. And if he had a voice, which he does whenever I'm nearby, he would sound kind of like this. Hey, I'm Buddy the dog. I'm just kind of stupid. So I will, I will just voice Buddy the Dog for my children's amusement. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> the next few questions are probably going to be just mainly centered around Sonic stuff. Okay. Now that we've got this little general 
category out. So how is it that how, how does it feel to still be the voice of Eggman? You've voiced him for quite some time since Sonic X, if I'm if I recall correctly. And uh, since then, I know that some casting stuff changed. So how does it feel like to be just like this long standing um, role? It's been just over 10 years, actually. August 23rd, 2003 was when Sonic X premiered. Um, realistically, I was voicing it a couple months before that in pre-production, but by the time it aired, that's when I count. It's a great honor to still be doing it. It's, it's a rare treat to be in, in such a long-running role, and especially a, a role where there has been such turnover elsewhere in the casting process. Um, it's something that I'm grateful for every time I get the opportunity to record. Um, and it's something that I don't take for granted and have to take good care of both, both the character and my association with the character. But for example, I just recently had the, uh, permission to announce that I'll be voicing Dr. Eggman in Sonic Boom or whatever it ends up being called by the time it airs in 2014, the new, uh, CG, uh, yeah. uh, cartoon thing that's happening. And that is, that has been a tremendously hilarious experience so far. I can't say too much more other than I'm laughing. So, <laughs> congratulations, that, by the way, Mr. Pollock. We did it. We saw the tweet. Thank you. There, there is much trepidation among the fan base of, oh, this could be horrible. Oh, it's the worst catastrophe. It's the Hindenburg. Um, but I wouldn't worry. If you can keep an open mind, you'll be well rewarded. I've probably <laughs> already said too much. Oh, uh, personally, like even if it does turn out to be terrible, I'm just kind of happy that Sonic is actually turning out a new cartoon because some other game franchises just they haven't tried anything like that in a long time, and it's nice to have that variety in entertainment. Absolutely, I'm thrilled to see it uh, keep going, and and I hope it leads leads to many wonderful things, and not just for such selfish reasons as I am. I want to be part of it, <laughs> but I do, obviously. <laughs> Well, of course, Eggman wants to be part of it. He wants to foil that hedgehog. Absolutely. <coughs> Jorko, oh. don't you want to ask him that big question? Oh. <laughs> this is so sudden, I had no idea. Oh, I'm sorry, not that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, we love Big the Cat, although most people don't. Uh, we were just wondering what you think of him and if you would if you would ever try to voice him if given the chance? Um, the closest I would get to voicing Big the Cat is probably Buddy the Dog that we just that we just shared. <laughs> I um, was actually laughing because like, hey, that'd be good. <laughs> basically, it's um, from what I saw of Big the Cat in Sonic X, which was most of what I saw of Big the Cat was in Sonic X. Um, he's a fun, big, goofy character. The voice seemed a little, I guess, out of place for the the anime dub but then again there were many other wacky voices in the anime dub but i don't i, I i'm not there to make judgments about the quality of any project that i'm in i'm there to read a script and speak and do what the director wants so i don't i try not to form too many opinions but just in watching it i said well that's an interesting and fun voice that i could see being used for other things if not quite perfect for this character but then again I didn't give much thought to what else the character might sound like. So just based on the name and the size of the character, Big was the right, the right space that the voice occupied, if that makes any sense. It does to me, vaguely. <laughs> and I guess playing a dopey kind of worked for the way it was written. So I had no problem with it. I'm sorry I'm not big and edgy. Me and my pal Foggy aren't that cool. <laughs> Personally, I love to do that voice. <clears throat> I don't know, I think that's like the only voice I can copy from Sonic games. It's just Big the Cat. And embarrassingly, I think I did a pretty good cream. <laughs> <clears throat> Not right now, though, of course. Right of now course. I sound more like death. Quite all right. Thanks for trying. <laughs> okay, do you wear a prop mustache when you record Eggman? Just Do you ever just want to just put on a big old bushy mustache while you record Eggman's lines? Uh, the closest I've gotten to that is wearing an Eggman t-shirt, which I've done on a couple of occasions. But generally, no. What a cool cat, though. Exactly. Uh, he has such a great mustache. <laughs> Absolutely. It must, it must be horrible to maintain. <laughs> well, 
It's worth it. It looks great. Top notch. Alright. So, uh, what what do you think of Eggman as a character? He's evolved quite a bit over the years, and many different people have provided voices for him. He's very cathartic to play. If I go in with any aggression, uh, I come out with very little, because I've gotten it all out while recording. Um, he obviously has some personality issues, but that's not my problem. That's that's for the writers to deal with or some type of analyst. <laughs> but uh, obviously, he provides... Uh, he is the... Um, in terms of dramatic uh, tension, you've got to have your hero and you've got to have something for the hero to fight against. Uh, obviously, I, I slept on that day of class or I'd remember the actual terms after all these years. <laughs> but he provides the conflict. That's it. He's the conflict in the show. And that's necessary for any good drama or any good comedic situation that's got <laughs> some drama in it. But it's an honor to follow in the legendary footprints of my forebears, especially uh, Jim Cummings, who work, whose work I admire uh, for his dead-on impressions of Disney voices like Sterling Holloway's Winnie the Pooh and Paul Winchell's Tigger. Um, I first heard those and said, wow, those are really good sound alikes. So I doubt he knows who I am if he's listening. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. But um, <laughs> I, I'm honored to share a character with him, even though I've had it longer. But um, it's great fun to play. Never I'm, a dull sure moment. He's, I'm sure he's glad that you're, you've taken, you know, you've, he's passed the torch on to somebody very reliable and very good. If he has no idea who I am, I'll at least pretend he does for the sake of that thought, because it's a very nice one to have. <laughs> I don't know. Would you follow your character, like, say, if you stop being Eggman, would you still follow him? Like, who is his voice actor? How is he progressing through the games? Um... I would probably sample it. I don't know that I'd follow it a lot. Uh, having been replaced in various day jobs over the years uh, from various radio stations or various uh, radio syndication outfits, I have not followed the work of the companies after I was asked to, remo to remove myself f from them. So I'm guessing probably not very closely. I Having the large and loving fan base, high fans that I have, I'm guessing that samples of a replacement voice would eventually find their way to me, whether I wanted them to or not. But I don't think I would sort them out or seek them out uh, on my own. Yeah. All right. Seems reasonable. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Silly old question of, uh, would you want to be Eggman in real life? No, it would be. It's exhausting coming up with all those new plans and schemes. Who has the time? Eggman. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but there's only one. And I just sound like him sometimes. <laughs> just sometimes. Exactly. Like, for example, so, right now, I don't. So, see, it's, it, it's all an illusion. Well, I mean, you can still, like, hear a little bit of... When I listen to you, just your voice, you, you could still kind of pick up some of the... Um, little dialect that you uh, portray in some of your voice acting. Absolutely. So. I mean, all the voices are based on me to some degree because they're all my voice. And, mm -hmm. and yes, I have a rather flexible, malleable, ooh, big $10 word, uh, voice. And so it's always going off in wacky different directions. So, yes, I, I, I will take that in the complimentary sense that I'm sure it was intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 for sure. I, I... Yeah. <laughs> so... Mike, do you remember Sonic Blue Thunder? How's that production going? Um, in terms of realism, not so much. <laughs> in terms of the fantasy. <laughs> yes. In some alternate reality, I'm sure it's selling beautifully. But in reality, not so much. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you still remember that. Mm-hmm. Boy, it was such a wonderful idea, too. <laughs> As well. They can't all be winners. I guess there was just one more question left, and that was about the Sonic cartoon. And yeah. we know you can't really say that much about it. I don't know, Dorko, you got any way to weasel some information out of him? <laughs> I was just going to ask if there was just really anything you could say about it, but... Uh, it exists... 
Oh uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we got the scoop. Yes. Hey I fans, Mike Paul confirms it exists. As as many news reports before me have <laughs> verified, it does exist, and I'm in it. <laughs> Do you also confirm uh, Sonic Red Herring exists? Uh, absolutely. There's no question about it. Sonic Red Herring definitely exists. Coming uh, to theaters, 2014. Yeah. And I can also confirm uh, uh, Sonic Boom uh, 2014 will not contain Orson Welles, Cary Grant, or Laurence Olivier. None of those people will appear in the cartoon. I can confirm that. No. Well, that's good to know. Well, now some fans can cross those off their wish list. Sorry, fans. (laughs) Well, what if I could ask for an opinion of what you think of um, well, actually, I don't know if you've seen the characters, but I was going to ask if you like how Knuckles looks like, because I'm curious, but... I can't say. <laughs> oh, boy. Not even your opinion on how his appearance looks? On the, sh- on the silhouette? As I, well, I, I said before, I don't really... I'm not there to have opinions. Whatever they want things to look like is... is that, That's what they want it to look like. That's fine. I'm not there to, to say, What are you, high? You can't have it look <laughs> like that. That's not what I'm there for. I'm... I'm there to make a voice come alive, lifting off the page, the words from the page, and I'm there to make the producers and directors happy. So, Is, is there any chance you could just say that line in Eggman's voice? No. <laughs> I will say this in Eggman's voice because it's generic and no one will get yeah. me for it. I'm Dr. Eggman! There, see, it's like just to prove I can really do it. Oh, shoot, and we thought you were fake all along. Thank you so much. Yes, in fact, that was just a recording of the real Mike Pollock saying that line. That was not me at all. Seamless, yeah, wasn't it? <laughs> really well done. Uh, you probably played an MP3 over the mic. Yes, I have a soundboard right here. Look, <laughs> I'm Dr. Eggman. See, I did it again. Jeez. Thank you. Well, that sure is generic, but I didn't think you could say something with his name in it. No, I mean, I, I'm not about to you know, have him endorse Diet Coke or anything. Which, by the way, if you do a little Googling on the vestibules, Diet Coke, you'll find a brilliant... Uh, call back to my Laurence Olivier comment where they did a brilliant uh, bit of uh, Laurence Olivier doing a spot for Diet Coke by chopping up bits of his lines from when he was alive and it sounds like he's endorsing Diet Coke which is why I make the joke of Eggman doing Diet Coke because I can't do it but the vestibules vestibules, it's late isn't it the vestibules did it for Laurence Olivier and it's hysterical I'll send you a link you can link to it, it's brilliant oh yeah for sure, I I wouldn't mind watching that I watched your um the sun, sh- the shading sun commercial, or something like that. The sunset of on on Yeah, can I just mention what a jerk you are in that? <laughs> yes, you may. Absolutely. Uh, you did not give them that that shading for free. I've never seen a commercial do that. Why? You think we're just giving these away? No, it's- make a call. <laughs> interesting little backstory to that. Uh, this is in- interesting little insight into the creative process. Um, during the recording of that script, the original line said something to the effect of, I said I'd show you, not give you. And as I was recording that and as they were busy discussing other stuff and I was had a moment between recording, I looked back and forth through the script and at no point did he ever say, I would show you. So I said, I raised my hand very politely from the other side of the glass and say, pardon me, he never actually said he would show you or give you. He didn't say anything about that. Oh, ooh, right. So did a quick little re- rewrite on the fly and made it. I'm showing you, not giving you. So, thank you. Sometimes a, a, a second pair of eyes with an English, uh, some English language training, uh, I guess, really helps for that. Mike Pollock confirmed for the writer of the uh, Shade Sun commercial. Yes, I want proofreader credit on that, which I'll never get. I didn't realize that was Mike Pollock. I thought that was just a random YouTube link when Megafire linked it the other day. <laughs> I'm extremely versatile. As I like to say, my versatility is highly underrated. Wow. Here, listen to that later. <laughs> oh, great. Good. Well, yes, we well, will. listen to it now if you'd like to edit it out later. It's fine. Nah, I, I it's... pass that in whenever I hear it. It's brilliant. You've tempted me, Mike. I don't know. <laughs> you'll get it when we're done and you'll laugh. Yes, yes. And the fans won't be here to enjoy that. Ha ha ha. Now you're welcome to link to it. 
I'm yeah, sure it's well, violating. Well, of all course, sorts. of course, we'll provide a link to it in the description. Isn't it's that right? George? All sorts of all, all sorts of copyrights are being violated by it existing where it exists. So you didn't get that link from me. Who, dude? Exactly. Uh, this link appeared in the chat. Uh, Dorco, did you see where it came from? It just came out of nowhere. It's a miracle. It's a ghost. Internet miracles. Spooky ghosties. <clears throat> Uh, well, we've basically exhausted our questions. I don't know, Dorco, do you have anything else you want to say? Because I kind of threw in some of my own little questions here. <laughs> I don't really have anything, except uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that cartoon and seeing Eggman in it. That makes two of us. <laughs> that makes three. See, I, I'll, I, I don't think I can get in trouble for saying I'm looking forward to seeing this when it's done. Nah. I, uh, that's it. You're fired. <laughs> yes, exactly. You support this program? You can't be in it. Bye. Thank you. What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, nope, your support is not allowed in this uh, during this part of production. Exactly right. We we want to fight adversity all the way around. All right then. <laughs> I'm against it. <laughs> any cartoon is a member. I don't. I don't want. To, no. The Groucho Marx once said, and I'll paraphrase: Any cartoon that would have me as a member, I don't want to have anything to do with. Thank you. <clears throat> Right. Well, we know we've had uh, plenty of our fans, a.k.a. five people, like, want you to sing the Eggman theme, and I'm pretty sure you can't do that, can you? Well, I can't for several reasons. For one thing, I'd get in tremendous trouble because they don't have official permission. But of second of all, as many times as I've been exposed to the Eggman theme by fans, I don't come across the Eggman theme in my daily living because it's in the games that I'm not playing. So I don't know the Eggman theme right offhand, and I've not just, gone to great lengths to try and learn it. So, sorry. You should just play every time you walk into the recording studio. That would get old really fast. <laughs> Probably. Uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> I really don't know what else to ask you, Mr. Pollock. Um, I don't know what else. Uh, I mean, I would love it if you could say something in Eggman's voice that was something other than... Hi, I'm Eggman. Uh, okay, wait. Uh, let's see. Hi, I'm still Dr. Eggman. There oh, we go. okay, you added still in there. <laughs> there we go. Shades of difference. Thank Dude, you. you found loopholes, Mike. See? I'm so crafty. So deep. Here. You are. I don't even know what a generic phrase would be. Like, you just said it like it was just, you know, it was common sense. Like, you know, generic phrase. Um. <laughs> all right, Dorco, you wanna nothing else? No. Uh, <laughs> I can't improvise. I've got nothing. All right, no, honestly, no pressure. Yeah, we we we're pretty nervous about this. I mean, the first Don't time I've ever talked to somebody so <laughs> God, <laughs> Eggman, our Lord and Savior, Ella, Ella our Lord and Savior. Okay, I haven't done any Ella for you, so look, I'm doing Ella now. Thank you. Ella's been out of production for almost 10 years, so I can do this. Thank you. Oh, man. okay, so you can say something in Ella's voice. Well, not. It depends on what you wanted to say. Hi, I'm Ella for Diet Coke. I also probably can't do. Um, but. how about... See, there's nothing worth ha worth having Ella saying. <laughs> well, well, I know it's not Eggman, but we did ha we do have a phrase in our little Skype group. Dorgo, should I, should I ask him to say it? If it's the one I'm thinking of, I, I don't know. <laughs> Good input. <clears throat> it's sort of our little um little uh Skype group meme, if you will, uh, that word. <laughs> Until a better word comes along, it will have to do. It'll have to do. Um Dorko, this is your last chance to stop me. I, whatever, what do we have to lose? Okay. I'll have veto power on whatever it is, by the way. All right, I'll type it out. All right. <clears throat> oh, no. I appreciate the thought, but things can be taken out of context, and that'll get in trouble. <laughs> Especially because I guess the... Originally. I yeah, I, I understand how, how such things develop, but... Let's just not say we did. All right, all right. 
Fair enough. I guess there's always theoretically the possibility that Ella could be revived for the cartoon. Can't imagine why they'd want to. And then, and then we will be, um, and then we'll be flagged and we will be retroactive. Yes, retroactively. <clears throat> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know how Sega does things. Sega I, don't sue. Yes. So, like I said, yeah, so just in case, since she's technically associated with the franchise, I should probably treat her with greater respect. Oh, I love Ella. I love how you did Ella. I, I think when I was younger, she was my favorite, just because I of love, how ridiculous. I love the fact that I was cast as Ella, and I love even more that most people don't know it was me. I and didn't everybody... until I watched an interview. Exactly. And when I tell people, and they and they, oh my god, really? I said, Thank you, I'm very versatile. Beautiful man. Voice is a character. All right, Darko, roll us out. That's all that we can really exhaust. Thank you for your time, Mike Pollock. Sure, we've gone from five listeners to at least two by now. So sorry <laughs> for the folks who, who tuned out. Of course, if you could help us out, you know, once this episode comes up, we'd really appreciate it. Of course, you don't have to do this. Make it's a link, I'll free. share it. Linking is free. Sharing is free. It's nice to share. <clears throat> Thank you so much. That, that's all we really want. We just want people to hear your beautiful voice answering questions for people. We just did it for ourselves, but if people could hear you answer these, that'll be a plus. Uh, I, I appreciate go- the, the preparation that you've done and that it moves along smoothly, not completely polished, but that's okay in the days of the internet. Polished is not necessarily the operative word, but it moves along. No awkward pauses. <laughs> More, no more so than necessary. So <laughs> yeah, we I, apologize. We, no, no, we're please. Nervous. There have been worse. So I appreciate, I appreciate the efforts. You're doing a fine job. This was nice and fun. That's where the editing comes in. <laughs> That's quite all right. The, the fact that you're showing some mental agility allows me to do the same, and it works out fine for everyone. Yeah, honestly, it really sucks that I got my, uh, my throat just punched. And I will. Just, uh, I will. I'll share a, share a story since it's it's relevant. Um, for about two and a half to three months of uh, Sonic X and obviously other stuff that I was recording at the same time, I had a nasty case of laryngitis, and I was too bullheaded to go to a doctor and have it treated because I figured, oh, this can't possibly last more than a few days. You know, I, I had laryngitis for a week and then it goes away. One week stretched to two and three and four, and didn't really go away until I finally decided, you know, I should probably see an ear, nose, throat professional. So I went to my local otolaryngologist who prescribed um, a bunch of steroid pills, not the anabolic steroids <laughs> that athletes take. That that won't be necessary. But these are the uh, the other kind of steroids whose names I forget that actually reduce uh, inflammation, which is the problem of laryngitis. It's when your your vocal folds, as we as the professionals call them. They get inflamed and they swell and they don't work as well. Um, and it was the fastest cure I ever had. Within half an hour of popping the first pill, I could hear my voice coming back and it was, it was miraculous. That's the true miracle, not, not where that link came from. The true miracle is steroids versus laryngitis. So here's a tip, kids. Don't be afraid to see the doctor if you're sick. Has science gone too far? Yes. So listen, if, if that lasts more than a week, go see a doctor. Yeah, <clears throat> it's been three Mike days. Pollock wa- Mike Pollock once <laughs> recommends steroids for you, laryngitis. <laughs> Mike Pollock recommends get fit. Yes, that's right. M- Mike Pollock wants to pump you up. <laughs> I, could Im- I could imagine you. I just saw you just you know clap and point at the screen. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Well, that was way more than half an hour that we agreed to. <laughs> it was, but like I. Here's the, here's the other tip, kids. Other kids might be thinking of doing an interview. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, I'm glad you had fun. That really means a lot to me and Dorko. Dorko, I'm sure it means a lot to you. I'm going to speak for you for the rest of this. <laughs> hey, I really like the character and the voice that comes with <laughs> Thank you. I wish I wish I could legally do more with it. But again, I'm, let them write me stuff and I'll say stuff. No, 100%. It's all right. We understand. It was more like shots in the dark, just because we don't understand legal mumbo jumbo. Someday you'll have a thing where this is a problem, and you'll say, "Oh right, I guess I have to respect that." Oh, for sure. Don't Especially bite if the I hand do. that feeds you. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, they feed you? <clears throat> yeah. 
they feed me. Well, they ha- actually have fed me on, on, on some reason things, but usually they feed me with a love, with a nice paycheck, which involve, which lets me buy my own food. So indirectly, huh. yes, they do feed me. Good, good, good job. I thought they just kind of put a bib on you and spoon feed you. It's more like <laughs> it's more like a, uh, a, a a batting cage with uh, with with vegetables. <laughs> They're pelting you with raw with uh, raw fruits and vegetables. It's fantastic. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, Dorco, for real this time. <laughs> make it, yeah, all right, make it stop now. I, We've I, made it go for 48 minutes. Make it's it been so fun, but I guess I should just hit the stop button. So, uh, do, 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 podcast over. Yay. Get the hook. <laughs>